All right, well, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the Chat Realm interview show. Uh, this week we've got James Thatcher, better known as Big Jim, in the chat room. Uh, he's also the host of Tech and Trade, which you may know from the end of various daily tech news shows. So, uh, how are you doing today, Mr. Big Jim? Mr. Jim? I, I am, well, <laughs> uh, you can, you, we're, we're, we're all friends here. You we're all friends here. <laughs> No, uh, I'm doing good. Uh, had to deal with a uh, screaming four-year-old earlier who didn't understand why he couldn't run around the house and um, beat on things, especially his two eight-month-old twin brother and sister. But other than that, oh, I'm sure. fabulous. You know, you know, it sounds day. like sounds like reasonable requests that he's making. I, I'm not sure why. You know, I, I I'm sure it would be fine if he was in his own self-isolated, contained environment, but not not. Not on the kids. That's so so far, that's kids. illegal. That's uh, imprisonment. <laughs> um, it's at least uh, larceny of some type or other. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. So I, I'm pretty or sure you. Right. I'm pretty sure you, you've mentioned this before. But uh, what are the origins of your chat handle? Uh, okay, so when many, many moon ago, uh, I was on the internet under another character name. It was called Animated, and with the at symbol because I thought I'd be cute and cursive writing. <laughs> and uh, so I did that for a while, and then I realized I needed to be a grown up. I got married, and I needed to start being a grown up. And I needed a new chat handle. And in all honesty, I hadn't been on chat really that much anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. And I fell back into Twit, which was interesting because I had been completely off of IRC radar for the most part for a long time and off of um, podcasting in general for a long time. And I had reacquainted myself or found Life Hacker. I said, since they reacquainted, I found Life Hacker oh, sure. again. And so Gina Trapani had posted on there, hey, I'm going to be on This Week in Google, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. I, I'll tune in and watch. And then I saw Leo Laporte, and I'm like, wait a minute. I remember that guy. Yeah. So that guy from ZDTV. <laughs> and, then they said, and then they said, oh, and by the way, we have a chat room. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I went in, and the first couple of times I went in, I went in as guest 17-whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so I'm like, this is no good. And at the time, I was working – um, here in Dayton, Ohio, I was working on site uh, for one of our clients, and it's in an automotive plant. And they, um, some guy said, "Oh, here comes Slim Jim," and he's like, "That's not Slim Jim, that's Big Jim." And I'm like, <laughs> "Bingo! There's the chat handle. There you that's go. what it's I." A, it's an easy short so, name to say and remember. And... It's simplistic, and I can be somewhat anonymous if I need to, by yeah. it because there's a lot of Big Jims out there. So exactly works for me. Definitely. No, that, that's pretty awesome. So you're you're into technology, obviously, like the rest of us yes. are, as as you mentioned from from watching this week in Google. But uh, what what's your favorite non tech thing to do? I'm sure you get out there oh, and do something. Geez. Yeah. Um, wow. Non tech. Uh, if we're going geek route, um, probably the one thing that I will listen to and listen to. I, I started listening to it again was um, Major Spoilers Podcast Network over at Majorspoilers.com. If you're not familiar with them, go over there, check it out. Great network. Um, they do mainly comic books. And so I started listening to Critical Hit, which is their Dungeons & Dragons podcast. Mm. And I said, okay, cool. You know, I, I had played D&D in college, but I'd kind of fallen out with it. And I'm like, you know what? I, I really just want to listen to something for a while. So I turned it on. I was listening. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, we also have these other podcasts. And so I listened to the other podcasts. I'm like, comic books. I remember those. I remember, I remember those. those. <laughs> so I started to get back into comic books. And so that's one of the other things I like to do. I like comic books. Um, I like anime. Um, not the goofy, goofy, you know, sexual innuendo anime. I'm more <laughs> of the big, big robot smash anime uh, or the, uh, the technology based anime. Um, those two things are really cool. I just recently got into, uh, quadcopters. Ah. This is the SEMA X5, which, uh, My Padre is <laughs> recommended for, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, for a uh, know-how. Yeah, this is just the Hubsan X4 that Darren always recommends. Oh, and Lay, Lay there's my, my screen freeze of the show. So hey, that's a good, well, hey, good if it's going to freeze, it's going to freeze on a, on a drone, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. 
No, no, I can't complain about that. So, <laughs> no, but uh, no, Padre recommended on Know How the uh, the X Five, and um, I gotta tell you, it is a a dream to fly. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's cheap. Uh, it's got a camera on it. The camera's not great, but it's fun to play with the camera on it. It's got a two megapixel camera on it, which can do video, oh, nice. which is kind of fun. So I kind of, it kind of feels like I'm getting something out of it, um, except for when I stick it in trees, which happens a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's why it's cheap. So you know, I'm not paying five thousand dollars for a. a grandiose quadcopter oh exactly well and that's why i have the the little cheap one that i have because it's I'm, I'm gonna break it a few times <laughs> you know my next my next my next big uh dream is to figure out a way and i'm sure somebody's already done this so don't don't berate me guys I, i'm sure somebody's done this is to get a quadcopter with a wi-fi lte hookup so i can just like have it hover sit and put it into a hover like over a conference or something and have everybody have like decent wi-fi connection or mesh network kind of connection to each hmm. other via the b via the drone just because you can <laughs> yeah, you're so talking, that's kind of like, like an indoor project loon <laughs> yeah exactly exactly uh the the downside is right now is the batteries that i've been playing with they're only good for <clears throat> 20 minutes so it really wouldn't be that great of an experience right now no but at that I'm rate sure... you might as well just hang up you know get up on a ladder and hang a repeater on the ceiling for a uh, for, for exactly. network you know that's <laughs> Exactly. But, you know, what are you going to do? So um, yeah. other than that, I am hugely, um, I guess, tech wise, I'm hugely into Android. I am I, I am I am a I am not a Google apologist, but I love me some Google uh, Android software. And uh, in fact, I'm researching uh, a new phone right now, uh, which is terribly fun. So that's uh, one of the things that um, I'm really kind of passionate about. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I really love Android, and because uh, we had, um, uh, you know, iPods before and stuff, just the, the iPod touches, and when I went to, to get a cell phone, I was like, mm, no, nope. because I, <laughs> I had a Nexus 7, and I enjoyed the, the Google Atmosphere so much better, because I could do all the techie, nerdy stuff that I wanted to do to make the phone my, my own thing, you know, so. I, I, I can be one of those <laughs> real smarmy jerks that can actually say I've never owned an Apple product oh. and um, it's not that I don't want to own an Apple product I can't afford to own an Apple product <laughs> they're just so expensive and right. when you can get uh, basically an iPhone 6 quality on a, um, a OnePlus One or uh, the new uh, Asus Zenfone 2 kind of budget of you know you're spending three or four hundred dollars on a phone compared to six hundred dollars with a two-year contract for an iphone 6 plus um no yeah no, thank you i mean the, the, not all their stuff is is overpriced phones definitely um but as far as like you know the uh, well, laptop i love oh yeah the watch is screwed yeah I, I have a pebble i, yeah, I was gonna say i'll show you what i have but yeah there's my my moto 360 which uh i have a yo from you on so. yeah right <laughs> i i uh i can't do one day of battery life so you know that's why that's why i'm pebble but you know i i i found a way on the moto 360 where i'm getting about a day and a half to almost two days now oh that's pretty good so um it, it's it it has to do with basically putting it into theater mode so it only turns on when you push the button, which is fine because I don't want it to be on anyway when I'm not really looking for a time. Right. Uh, it comes on when it pushes the button and then it, it minimizes the battery down. I think I went to bed last night. I put it on the charger just so it was charged. I had like 52% left. Okay. So, you know, and I and it's not like I went to – oh, he, old man James, he went to bed at like, you know, 8 o'clock. <laughs> I went to bed at like midnight last night and I still had like a 52% charge. Oh, yeah. So – um, no, I, I think, I think I've kind of found a way that it'll last about a day and a half, give oh, right. or take. See, I use, I actually use mine as a watch, um, except the face I have is, is one I made with, uh, that reads out the, the, uh, temperature and stuff uh, of your current location as well. So, but, but the part that I enjoy is that I do use it as a watch because every, you know, hour or two I'll look down and go, oh, you know, it's currently 39 mm -hmm. degrees. It's freaking cold here in Wisconsin, you know? <laughs> And so. I use it. I, I'll be honest. I use this thing. The biggest thing that I use this for is texting and honesty. And that sounds so ridiculous and so stupid. But when you get to the point where you can look down and you can swipe over, 
click reply and say blah 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 blah, and it comes up almost all the time. I would say this thing, uh, Google, you know, the Google voice capture now is probably ninety percent accurate. Oh, when yeah. it's ninety percent accurate, that's good enough i mean oh, for yeah. me that's good enough that if i don't have to pull the phone out unlock the phone put the stupid code in and then sit there and try and swipe or type with my thumbs you know i'm perfectly happy with it so oh, yeah well that's I'm, I'm excited about the pebble time for that too because you have the uh the microphone on it it does kill the water uh proofness it turns it into water resistant but you know, not many people go diving with their watch. So I was going to say, I, I know that there are some places, but I don't know of that many deep scuba diving places near you. So, yeah, no, I mean, no. maybe there are, but <laughs> no, not I'm, this time of year. Yeah. So um, going, going back to, to some questions for you, uh, I'm, you're, okay. you're a Twitterer, I see, as you're by your Twitter handle. Um, yep. What is the best fit Twitter account that you follow, in your opinion? Uh, um... Oh, wait, are we talking for entertainment value? Are we talking for uh, personal value? Are we talking for tech value? Um, or are we overall, talking work? Probably just overall entertainment value. Um, it's going to sound crazy. Um, but I'm going back to – here's the call back to Major Spoilers. Uh, there's a guy on Major Spoilers whose name is Matthew Peterson uh, who is an excellent uh, – Excellent podcaster. He's very funny, uh, very witty. Um, at Mighty King Cobra, and he will occasionally just come up with some real zingers that are just hilarious. And then occasionally he'll just do his top, like top ten of something or other. So top ten comic book heroes that you've never heard of that you should have back in the eighties. And huh. he'll go through and he'll do a tweet of ten to one, and it's really, really good. Interesting. Um, I, I really enjoy that one, and then I guess the other one that I I follow. I mean, if if I do a fun one, I have to kind of say a work one. So if I'm going to say a work one, uh, I would probably I would probably say for trade related stuff. Um, and I'm going to have to pull it up because I don't remember his handle. I remember his name. I don't remember his handle. Uh, it would probably be Doug Jacobson uh, at. Uh, uh, what is his trade trade law news uh, at trade law news? Uh, he covers a lot of great stuff that's going on in the trade for us, at least that is really interesting uh, from a trade perspective. Um, he, as well as there's a couple other companies out there that kind of, that they're very good at what they do, but I, I really like Doug's take on stuff. Um, I think he, he brings some very interesting uh, points of view to articles. So I, I dig him. Um, and then otherwise, you know, you got Jenny who just is hilarious. She posts all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. No, I love Jenny's stuff on there. Well, and especially if you, you've been, have you been listening to uh, tell it anyway? Her yes. Podcast? It's yeah. Her stuff oh from that God. is great. <laughs> I have, to, I, I, at some point I have to beg her to be on that show. I really do. I, it's one of the shows that I really, really love following. Um, is tell it anyway. So yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, and I can see why why she married. Well, one why her husband is a writer and why she married him because he's an excellent storyteller. Yes, yes, and he, she, she, and um, Rich from Lovely Cleveland, and I uh, kind of got into a little discussion. I think it was last night about um, her dog, and then Rich's dog, and then my cat, and it. You know, it was a lovely little stream that went on for a little while. So if you're bored, go back to last night and look at the follow the follow the stream because it's it's you get a picture of my cat. I mean, hey, hey what, you actually, go. you get two pictures of my cat. So oh. hey, you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah, two for. <laughs> now I, I have a cat that acts like a dog. How does that work? <laughs> she she seriously plays fetch. And she likes human oh, okay. food. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. Fetch is one thing. Okay. I was going to say, if she's, like, scratching on the door and asking you to take her for walks, that there's a psychosis problem there. No, but, not asking uh, for walks, but she can't stand a closed door. She will scratch. She will paw at the door uh, if you close huh. it, especially if you're in there. You know, like, if I'm in my office and I shut the door because I need to, oh, for instance, do a podcast. <laughs> She will meow Why and paw would at the door. Why would you ever want to do a podcast? I know, I mean, like, come on. And without How her, that's yeah, that that's the uh, that's the sacrilege, really, is without her. So, oh. <laughs> so yeah, she's a fun cat, but 
No, uh, our, our cat is uh, our cat's Hazel, and her her favorite thing to do is just come up and sit on your lap, which is which is nice. And then she'll want to stretch, which is fine. And then when she stretches, her claws come out, <laughs> <laughs> and it goes into your leg, and it's like, ow! Well, you, you just so want to fall. Have, well. Uh, no, she's uh, we we got her we got her from uh, an animal shelter and she was already a year old and they really recommend not doing that if you they're over a year old because they they just can't cope with it it's like a mental thing. Oh no! So I we she doesn't want to fall. Long. That's why she does. That's why she claws into you so she doesn't fall off of you. Well, no, it's, you would think that. No, <laughs> she's like firmly on me. She's not going anywhere, and she just like it's like when she stretches. And then she wants to be comfortable after she's stretched is when she, like, digs her claws in. <laughs> it's like I have pock marks on my legs sometimes. And, like, she'll do that on my chest. And she did it to my face once or twice. And uh, one of my uh, fellow employees saw me and she's like, oh, my God, are those kids beating you up? I'm like, no, it's not my kids. This is my cat. Right. This is my kids. Nice. That's too so. funny. Um so if you were given a superpower or if you just gained one one day, what superpower would it be and uh, what's the first thing you'd do with it? Coming. Yeah, I of course knew it this is. question was coming. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. So you can't be a genie and wish for all the powers, right? I mean, right, that's yeah. just... You can't wish for more one. wishes, no. <laughs> you can't wish for more wishes. Um, although... In all honesty, and, and based off of my chat room experiences, I have always wanted to have the power of Q uh, from Star Trek. Uh, but that's, you know, okay, fine. I can't have omnipotence. I can't have <laughs> instant whatever I want. All right. Um, it, yeah, it would be good. But, you know, that's Superman is almost off limits. I mean, come on. He's, yeah, he's yeah, too powerful, too. <laughs> so if we're talking comic book, um, the one of the things that I really kind of enjoy, I, if I was going to give a superpower, I guess it would be um, matter control, control of different types of matter, right? Mm. So um, if I wanted to have a, ch a comfortable chair, I could just not necessarily make a chair appear, but take like, you know, a pile of bricks and then just change their matter construction at the atomic level so that they made a comfortable chair, right? Oh, nice. Um, I get it. Um, you know, and, and if you think about it, if you had that power, you could you could theoretically fly because you're controlling matter. You're controlling sound pressure and things like that because you're controlling that kind of thing. Could you have time travel? Probably if you really thought about it and you figured it out. But that's mm. not really I, – I just want to be able to control the power of uh, changing things from one kind of solid to another. Um Either that or have the capability of uh, multi-presence. So I could be here. I could be uh, up next to you. If I needed to be in an office somewhere, I could just be there but not really be there. Uh, so people would leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> so your other you know, self could go play video games. So <laughs> yeah, I, I got comic books to read. I don't have time for, you know, uh, I got Hearthstone to play, man. I don't have time for, you know, do work. Right. Uh, please, please, boss, don't fire me. Um, so, no, it's, it's, that's more, more my, uh, more my bag is, is, um, basically I think, I think the matter control would be the best the best present you could give me. And then what would I do with it? If I could fly, if I could use it to fly and do whatever I wanted to, I would travel. I would totally travel. I would go and see, uh, I'd go to Asia and hang out in Japan. I'd go to China. And I mean, I can do that now, but I have to pay for it. Right. I don't want to pay for it. I'm, right. I'm cheap. <laughs> right. You know, I'd like to be able to pick up uh, a couple of pebbles and uh, change their matter so that they turn into currency and just hand it to somebody. And then I never have to worry about money again. Right. right. Exactly. Um, you never have to – I mean you have to buy land. OK, great. I have to buy land so I own land. But I don't have to you know, build a house that I don't like. I could build a house that I wanted to and anytime I wanted to change – I don't like the look of this room. It's changed. You know, I don't have to think about it anymore. Um, so yeah, matter control. That would be probably – that's about as close to Superman as, as, as you could probably get. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, along the same veins and you're familiar with comic book – uh, uh, sure. planets and stuff, and real planets mm -hmm. too, but those are less interesting. Um, but mm -hmm. if you could move to any planet, real or fictional, uh, what, what would be, and uh, what would you, what would your house be like? What would you live in? You know, speaking of houses. Um, 
my first, I knew this question was coming. I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> my first thought when I thought of this question originally was um, Gallifrey. Just because I wanted to be there. I wanted to see what that was like or is like. Uh, Spoilers. Well, Spoilers. So, um, yeah, it, <clears throat> sort of both. Um, yes. Yeah, it's it's yes, a weird is place. And, <laughs> is, is not all at the same time. Spoilers may be included in this if you don't know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my first thought was Gallifrey, but, you know. It's kind of populated by with, jerks. Having to, yeah, well, it'd be a fun place to visit, but I don't know if I want to live there kind of thing. Yeah. So I think in thinking about it, I went back into the Star Trek mythos because that is my wheelhouse. Um, it's probably your most extensive list of, of planets, too. To it's the most extensive from. list of planets you have. It's not Hoth. Or, um, or Tatooine or Endor. Tatooine or Endor. <laughs> I was trying. I was going to say the Ewok planet. Thank you, Endor. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, if I really could choose a planet, it would probably be. I think it's Rigel. I think it's Rigel Three is the vacation planet. Oh, that to Ryza? me, Riza. Because oh, yeah. there are a couple of nice Rigels too, but Riza is like kind yes. of the quote unquote main one. Riza is the vacation plan. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Uh, Riza is probably where I would want to go and live because I imagine it kind of being like San Diego. It's always right. within a certain bandwidth of temperature. If you want to go someplace that's cold, they've got mountains and that's not that, you know, it's, it's an hour the drive to the mountains. Yeah. It's easy when you have weather yeah. control. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and it's nice there, and you know, there probably is a little bit of crime and a little bit of not so niceties, but because it is the quote unquote vacation planet, you know that they're going to keep it under control. Yeah, and so, most people that are there are only there for having fun anyway, which is what you're trying to get at too. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, I can't I can't I can't imagine a better place to raise kids um because you know the schools are gonna be good because they're gonna be like pushing on customer service and all this other kind of thing. So you want the customers and blah blah blah. So you know the schools are gonna be at least good if not great and it's Federation so they're not you know oh, yeah. okay, yes. The Borg could attack. All right, fine, it happens. Uh, that, there could be a planet. skirmish with the Klingons. But yeah. you know they got they got bigger fish to fry anymore. Well, well, I suppose it depends on when you're talking about. But <laughs> and if I and, and and the house, the home on the planet, I would probably want something by a seaside. No, oh, yeah, in the mount, so, something by a seaside, but with mountains that are close by. Uh, my wife really loves the mountains. I kind of like a seaside, but I don't want a sunny beach. It's more of a a main kind of like mm. you know, you know, you can smell the sea air, you can smell the salt air, but it's not like. You know, people are like hanging out in the, on the beach, and it's like, get out of my front lawn. You yeah, know, just... or, or like Washington or Seattle, where you have like the Cascades plus the exactly the beach and stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's I see. I'd like it to be a little warmer, so but I still like the mountains as well. So I would end up living more, you know, in the in San Diego's a little far down because you kind of get out of the mountains down there. But in that in that range of Southern California, where you have the the Sierra Nevadas behind you, or at least the foothills. And then you know you have your the ocean in front, just not LA. Just no, just, no, no. LA's too much work. <laughs> it's, it's... I had to go. I had. I, I. I literally. And I know Justin did his little thing. Um, when it came to traveling around LA, and 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 Spearmint Nitrate did a great intro with regard to that. Uh, it, it's absolutely true. I had to go two miles someplace in LA, and it took forty minutes. I'm like, yeah. it's too. I could walk faster than this, yeah. and it was. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Once you once you get out of that too, like my grandma lives in Glendora. It's way outside of LA, but it's yeah close enough. That there is the, stuff, you know. When you're in the outskirts, it's fine. It's if you have to like I had to go to LAX, or oh, God, if I no. had to cut up into get into downtown, or we had to go to Ho oh God, don't even try to go to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you really want to go there for much anyway, because it. Wait, boring. I, I don't understand what people's obsession is with it. It's pretty. Okay, it's well, pretty. Okay, yes. Saying you've driven. Okay, I drove down Rodeo Drive. Great, wonderful, good for you. Did you stop and buy anything? No. Okay, neither did I, because I can't afford to park yeah. there. So <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's not that's... far from the truth. <laughs> yeah. 
No, it's 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 oh shoot, I can't remember the what's that Lombard Street in San Francisco. Oh, it's like yeah. Lombard Street in San Francisco. I drove down Lombard Street. Great. You did it once. Congratulations. Now I never oh. want to do it again because it was a terrible street to drive down. Oh, and we did it. Here's the best part. We did it in an SUV. Oh like yeah. an Escalade. Like the big SUV, not like the little one, like the big Cadillac Escalade. Uh at night. Um and I think it was like that point at night right before the streetlights turn on, but it was like light enough that you could see, but the streetlights weren't really turned on yet. Right. So, yeah, no. Mm, mm. Nice. Nope. So nope. you nope. mentioned nope. up top that you uh, you work in trade. So what, what do you actually yes. do? What's your official title and everything? Uh, okay. My technical title <clears throat> is U.S. Customs Compliance and Information Manager. Um, that's a nice big long title, uh, that basically I have multiple responsibilities. I am a licensed U S customs house broker, which means if you're not familiar with what that means, it means that we help people bring in, uh, items into the United States. So it could be commercial cargo, like stuff that's going into uh, a factory or it could be um, a lot of what we handle is you know, factory stuff or uh, commercial items that are going to go on a, a, a store shelf, um, pharmaceuticals, uh, automotive parts, products, oh, sure. and, and automobiles in and of itself. Um, my um, One of the things that I've been doing with a lot lately is perishable logistics. So we have uh, the company that I work for is one of the largest parable logistics providers in the world. So uh, bananas, asparagus, um, that so, kind of stuff, which is fresh, fresh cut flowers. It's all going to um, be processed in a timely manner, you know, but it still has to be processed. So it's, it's got to go through and there's a lot of extra stuff that people don't people when you go into your local um, uh, supermarket, be it a, a Kroger, a Dillon's. Um, a Safeway, whatever, and you go and you see the the vegetables sitting there, and you, know, you pick it up and it says asparagus from Argentina. You don't know the path that that had to travel to get here, and right. all of the government bureaucracy that goes along with that. That's my job is the government bureaucracy part. Um, I've done the logistics and the transportation part. Um, I still do it. I mean, it's we all kind of do it, but it's um, my key focus is on that. Um, part of my job is working with, uh, federal trade representatives, um, or trade associations. So if there's a new legal requirement coming down the pipe through Washington, you know, we're talking with our trade associations, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, if there's something that we really want to push, you know, I'll call a couple congressmen's offices and say, Hey, not that I know really many of them personally. I know a couple of them, but it's not like, you know, I'm buddy, buddy. I'm some big highfalutin guy. No, I just... I just call their offices and I know who to talk to. Um, the, uh, the, the big role that I have lately is data systems. So I'm also responsible for our uh, part of our brokerage software data systems, not the actual maintenance of it, but application work. So mm -hmm. I will work on, um, you know, constructing reports in SQL, data drafting, data information in SQL, working on uh, customer profiles and maintenance that way. Um, management of power of attorneys and imaging systems and those types of things. So that kind of falls into my wheelhouse too. So I have the data side and then I have the customer, I guess, customer facing side. Uh, and on top of that, with the customer facing side, I also go out and I do presentations. Oops, sorry, we're losing you on Skype a little here. Hopefully it clears itself back up. Did we lose you? Maybe. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. It's I'm here. Back. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're just a little behind me, probably. Uh oh. Oh, and now I look like wonderful. Yeah, we'll give it give it a second. It'll catch itself back up. Any better? Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're coming through. You're just a little bit crunchy, but it should. We'll should fix clean it in it. post. Yeah, it should clean itself up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm telling it to keep the video on. So, yeah. wow, I am slow too. That reaction time is bad. Yeah, you're right. It's coming back. <laughs> can you hear me at all? I mean, is the audio coming through okay? Yep, I is sure can. Is the audio can. coming through okay? Yep, you're good. Okay. 
So um, the other thing that I do is um, the other thing that I do is go out and I, I put on seminars and presentations on um, you know what are the proper ways to bring things into the United States. Um, Rules and regulations. What what are these crazy things called? You know, with anti dumping and countervailing duties and things of that nature. So um, those are a couple of the things that I handle and I try and help others out with. Oh, that's awesome! So I'm sure you have <clears throat> some some good stories, at least from from dealing with with some of this stuff. So what, what's one of your more interesting or funny stories from from your job? Uh, um. Interesting and or funny. Um, we, wow. I'm trying to think of something that would actually be funny for everybody rather than just inside baseball. <laughs> um, okay. We had uh, a customer recently um, who is a zoological park who is bringing in a specific type of um, animal. Hmm. And uh, I guess that would be one of the more interesting things that we've brought in. And all the requirements that go into importing live animals um, and how for something – this was um, a marine animal. So it was really – it was a small marine animal. Um, but for something so small, you know – the five or six different government agencies you have to go through to bring it in. It oh, has man. to be inspected, the veterinary certificates, everything else that goes along with it. Uh, that was really interesting. And then if you compare that to something which this is going to sound ridiculous, but it's true. Uh, if you look at cosmetics, cosmetics has almost the exact same steps. Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> and it is to bring in a live animal, with the exception if you don't get fish and wildlife involved. Fish and wildlife is involved <laughs> in one side. But you've got similar similar things that occur that are almost the exact same for cosmetics, which is weird um, because they're hazardous, because they're flammable, um, because they go on the face. You have FDA because you could have certain types of things in the cosmetics. You might have APHIS involved, which is the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service. Hmm. Um, you, it, it's really, it's really weird when you compare and contrast those things, and then you look at okay, well, you know, you're turning around and looking. At, well, that doesn't make any sense. That's kind of weird, and all the things that are involved with that, and. So that that's interesting. Um, I guess one of the goofiest things I ever brought in was a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't for Harley. It was a guy who had it. Um, he had he brought the vehicle in. Uh, it was made in the United States, so it shouldn't be that hard to bring back in. But he took it into Dubai because uh, he was a soldier, and he had it in Dubai, and he he rode it around Dubai, and then he had it modded in D Dubai. So then when they brought it back to the U.S., um, you had to go through EPA and Department of Transportation and there was another one that he had to go through and I can't remember which. This was years ago. But once it was done, he he brought it by our office so we could see it because we don't – that's the thing. People say, oh, OK. You get to see all – I never get to see anything. I see right. paperwork. That's exactly. all I see paperwork. <laughs> Um, but he brought it by our office so we could see it because I, I said, you know, when you get this, you know, slide it by the office. I'd like to see at least what it looks like. This thing was amazing. It had solar panels on it what? that he had put on it in Dubai. And the solar panels, he had a solar panel on the front fender and a solar panel on the back fender. And he had um, solar panels on the sides that when he parked it, when he put the, when he put the, the stop down, he could fold up these solar panels on the side and that was supposed to charge the battery so that the battery could maintain a high peak efficiency so that when he's actually riding the bike, the battery wasn't really powering much because the motor would then kick in everything it had into actually pushing the drivetrain along, which was really cool. Oh, interesting. Um, so it was, it was, it, Apparently, it took a little bit of time to get it through all the government agencies because they, they were like, this doesn't make any sense to us. But he didn't have nitro on it or anything. It right, just, nothing crazy. Yeah, nothing crazy. But what he was able to do was get the horsepower up on the thing so much more than was stock made. So it was kind of a cool, kind of a cool thing to see. But um, 
yeah, I mean, that's probably one of the coolest things we've brought in. I mean, we bring in other cool stuff, not talking bad about any of my clients at all, but <laughs> we bring in all kinds of cool stuff, but that was one of the coolest things I got to see. Yeah, no, that's, that's really, it's, it sounds like it'd be really interesting. So, uh, you got your, your Twitter that people can catch you on Jay Thatcher sure. 79. And, uh, you're also do at tech and trade. Cause I know you do those segments at the end of uh, DTNS sometimes. Yep. And, uh, yep. any, anywhere else people can catch you or find what, what you're up to. Well, yeah. Um, if you're interested in finding about all about my, my crazy, I guess my, my splash page is at about.me slash Jay Thatcher. Um, I do have a website, James Thatcher.com. Uh, I'm sorry, James W Thatcher.com. Uh, that's got some out of date photos, which I really need to update. Um, <laughs> for my photo, uh, obsession, I have this thing with, uh, photography, um, but I kind of take it from the perspective of I'm not going to go out and buy a piece of equipment when I've got a, a lovely cell phone right here that's got a really great camera on it. Oh, so yeah. I'll take uh, mobile photography, which is kind of what I try and do. And then everything I do, everything on the phone, uh, HDR, if I do any HDR on the photo, any highlights, pickups, anything like that. The only thing I don't do on the phone is actually the upload. I'll actually um, swap that and do that on a mainline computer just because if I try and do it on the phone, it takes for – ever um but that's probably the big thing so yeah please follow me uh follow me on twitter at jthatcher79 at tech and trade uh if you've got any trade questions if you haven't been like completely put to sleep by what i've been talking about already uh <laughs> feel free to send them to me i know carl from california uh wanted me to look up and do some research on um i uh, excuse me not i watches apple watches um, so that's yeah. my next, uh, one of my next tech and trades is going to be on that as soon as I can get some more information. Cause it's kind of hard to get it right now on Apple watches. But, yeah. I probably don't know everything that goes into them quite yet. And... Well, I, it brought up a really good question of how do you classify a smartwatch? Because there's a provision for watches. There's a provision for computing devices. There's no necessarily provision for smart watches. So mm. how is it classified? And, and that, kind of went down a rabbit hole that I just haven't really had time to explore yet. Um, so my next tech and trade, I'm hoping to have out on next Friday. It won't be, it won't be anytime sooner than that. Cause I've got to travel this week, but it'll probably be Friday that I'll get it out. Oh, that's, that sounds great. So I, I look forward to hearing from it. So th thanks for joining me, big Jim. Uh, it's been great to have you on. Uh, anybody else that wants to watch more of these uh, d interviews can catch more of them at tinvec.com slash DD. There's uh, links there to subscribe to RSS and iTunes as well. And until next time, we're going to head out of here. But thank you again for joining me, big Jim. It's been a great fun time. It was a lot of fun and uh, really enjoyed it. Thanks, mm -hmm. Tinvec. Yeah. And I still think there needs to be a drop base speed in the end. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>